When you're trying to conceptualize a system, the challenge in facilities and work system design is to learn to understand the system from the standpoint of the system itself and not your potential perspective as an outsider looking in at the system. So let's just take the shopping mall example um, as a system you might want to conceptualize as you go through. So typically when I start conceptualizing a new system, I start just with some concept of operations type sketches. Sketch something out just to make sure you're aware of really what's going on as you go through. So if I think about a shopping mall, I tend to think in terms of the anchor stores. You know, you get an anchor store in a mall, it's, it's, you know, most, most malls have them, and each wing of the mall is kind of defined by its anchor, if you will. Um, so you might say that every, every anchor store has a concourse coming off of it in some way, and in that concourse we have a series of stores that we could depict, uh, and periodically we'll see a break in the stores because there'll be service corridors, the service entrances for deliveries and for staff to try to use. Uh, and typically there's some kind of a, a back service hallway uh, that serves all of those. And stores have access to them and things of that nature um, coming in. So we might consider that kind of a wing of the store or in my general term that I'm often using in my engineering, um, call them clusters, if you will. So. The mall is made up of a whole bunch of these wings as they go through. And outside the area of the mall, there might be um, an area for uh, waste management with dumpsters in it. Okay, with my dumpsters out here, I might have a, a um, service area with uh, loading docks in it or parking areas for the carriers to come through, things of that nature. So that's kind of how I think about the mall as I go through. So you want to conceptualize it and, then to, and say the mall might be a collection of the, these kinds of clusters or wings of activity, generalizing it in some way. So there's probably specifics that we're missing there, but we know this is largely uh, what needs to be managed. The next thing I try to do is try to make sure I understand what are the, what are the operational layers that I need to understand. You, you can't jump into a system as complex as a shopping mall and just start talking about it. This isn't a, you're not writing an essay of the day in the life of a shopper going to the mall. But that's a very, very specific view that isn't particularly relevant to some of your engineering. So when I try to think about the operational layers of a system like, like a mall, perhaps I'll, I'll start with usually the physical facility. So what is the physical um, side of what's going on here? So the idea, Think of that as architecture, if you will. Okay, there's a layer of I have to actually have them all before I can do anything else. So once I have that, then I can talk about what operationalizes those things. So I'm going to have stores uh, and amenities, you know, attractions. And not everything in the mall is a place where I go shopping. So I have you know, movie theaters and hair salons and uh, arcades where the children can play if I while I'm shopping. But I have stores and amenities that take advantage of the physical facility that I'm going to want to do. And once I know I have the stores and amenities, in order to operate the work at a mall, I'm going to need uh, employees coming and going. Okay, so there's a layer at which the employees have to come into the mall. And given what a mall is, I also have to have a set of merchandise okay, or my services that those employees are going to offer in my store. So that's another layer that has to come into the and then finally, once I have that, then, then I'm in a position to talk about my customers um, coming into the mall as things come through. Um, and another layer might even be some of the environmental um, issues that go on beyond the mall. So maybe traffic patterns and things of that nature are going through. Um, so I've got these operational layers I have to account for in my engineering. And if I keep them separate, I'll be able to isolate requirements and stakeholders and functions kind of at each of these layers uh, so that they go on at the right time. And I know from, from the physical facility, these things have got to be able to come in and I know they've got to be able to come out. So I'm going to be very interested in entrances and exits and things of that nature. Emergency handling, how do customers get out on a regular basis when they go home? And how do they get out on an emergency basis if there's a fire or some other kind of emergency is going through? Do employees come in and out of the mall the same way as customers? Maybe employees are allowed to use some of the service hallways um, in which to park because parking becomes an issue. Um, 
you know, where, where are people parking as they come in? And often employee parking is different than, or at least more remote than, some of the customer parking. So I want to operationalize the system in some way. So I've got my, if you will, an architectural view of what I mean by the physical facility, coupled with that logical view of what's going on in the system. So if I take those things aside for a moment, then I'm ready to really start conceptualizing the system. So I know I'm going to be developing the mall as a system. So the question is, what is it made up of? And the main thing I discovered it's made up of is this set of clusters. Um, I can call them clusters only because I find most systems have clusters. I find the term very useful. Um, you might prefer, if you're focused on malls, to call this a wing. If people call the different clusters in, in the mall a wing, it may or may not be a fixed word in the industry for that. You could look into that as you go. And each of those wings, I said, was if you will, a collection of um, stores as they went through. Um, I lost that idea. A collection of stores as they went through. Each of these stores occurs off of this concourse. Um, so I've got a collection of stores. Okay. So the mall will have one to many wings, and a, a wing will have, I'm going to say, zero to many stores, because maybe I could have a wing that doesn't have any stores. Um, in it and it's used for other purposes, perhaps an office wing for my mall management, something of that nature. So I've got all my stores going on. It might be interesting to note that among the subtypes, um, I, should, I should say that that anchor store was a particular um, type that's probably going to have some meaning as we go through it. If I think about the types of stores, most of the stores that I would draw on my diagram are just those boxes. But in fact, if I think about some malls I've been to, there are also kiosks, uh, kind of different kinds of stores going on as they go through. So I should probably recognize that there, can, there could be stores out here in the concourse that people walk around in. So as I think about that facility, I say to myself, okay, well, the, if a wing is a collection of stores, what else does a wing contain um, that I might be particularly interested in? So I might be interested in um, its entrances. So there might be zero to many entrances um, into a wing. Maybe not, maybe there are none. Maybe I can only get to this wing by walking through that wing and they're connected. Um, but many wings have an, an exit to the outside, outside world. They might even have parking lots. Okay, maybe zero to many dedicated parking lots. There's a place you tend to park if you're going into the J.C. Penney wing. There's a place you tend to park if you're going into the Sears wing. So I might want to represent that in terms of what's going on. The parking lot really is just a collection of parking spaces. But most consumers aren't that concerned with how many parking lots there are. They want to know how many parking spaces there are, whether they can, they can park as they're going into the mall as they go through. Also in, the, in this wing, I, I might know that there, there may be uh, restrooms. Okay, I'm looking at all the different features that come in. I know those service corridors are there. Um, that my deliveries might be coming through. And I might have a collection of waste baskets. Uh, I might have a collection of seats where people can sit down. Uh, and often you know, the mall, the function of the mall is I'm going to have one to many waste baskets and zero to many seats, uh, zero to many service corridors, and usually a zero or one restroom facility um, in a wing. So these are the things that I see going on as I receive through. I might have independent of the clusters, I might have my receiving docks where my trucks can pull in for deliveries. I might have my waste area, my waste management area, where I have my dumpsters. So I'm just you know, conceptualizing. During conceptualization, you're just sketching out, you're just trying to get an idea of what's there. You're not trying to be technically accurate, but during conceptualization, the biggest threat you face is that you will underrepresent the system and, and lose some of its scope by missing things. So you're trying during conceptualization to not miss things, while at the same time trying to figure out a strategy for how you're going to organize this into layers as you go. Because there may be a thousand requirements in a shopping mall. You can't just list a thousand requirements as you start to do your system. So we. We basically have a view of the mall that looks at it architecturally as a collection of wings that have stores. Um, we have a way of visualizing it in terms of the uh, operational layers that it may work with. Uh, 
and ultimately we, we start to think in terms of what are the components that really make it up. And if you sat and brainstormed a while longer, I'm sure you could double the number of boxes in a diagram like this. But this kind of gets at the essence, because when we talk about the mission of the mall, um, from the standpoint of the owners of the mall, what they want is stores that are fully occupied at the highest possible rent, recognizing that the only way they'll get high rents and keep that occupancy is that they design a mall that brings in customers. Now, part of that is you get customers based on what stores you have, so it is a little circular. But we all prefer to go to a mall that's nice, that's beautiful, it's well, it's clean, it's got great amenities and services. Um, you know, so it's, so the way the mall management keeps the mall up is its contribution to keeping the customers coming. Uh, so keeping those leases occupied, keeping the stores occupied, keeping you don't want empty stores, you don't want cheap stores, you don't want to have a garbage hub keep in your mall so that people won't pay top rent. The mall managers are really trying to maximize the occupancy of the stores in order to maximize their rent. Uh, so that tells you that the, the core of the system is going to be um, here in the center and the leases that we get for the stores as we go through. So that kind of conceptualizes the system, ties its operational layers and its structural facility layers back to the mission enough that we can feel confident we're getting the right picture of the mall in terms of just a conceptual model. Then we can move on to really starting to look at the pieces and how we would design the facilities and all the work around it.